They're explorers, entrepreneurs, and musical allies. They are the Deutsche Kammerphilharmonie Bremen. Since 2004, together with their Estonian conductor Pavel Jervi, they've played their way to the top of the musical world. They set standards with their performances of the complete Beethoven symphonies. Then came the symphonies of Robert Schumann, and now the four symphonies of Johannes Brahms. A school on the outskirts of the city of Bremen. This is where the Kammerphilharmonie has its rehearsal spaces. It's where they work on and study the Brahms symphonies, music which has been poured over and played many times down the years. Yeah, can, can, I, can I suggest that this figure, pa -ram -pam, pa -ram -pam, could start one level le less, yeah? Yam, pa -ram -pam. A little, little bit more dolce, different character. Before C, three bars, please. Can we also try it that we don't endure young, but that this last one is not exactly. too... Exactly. No, yeah, it's right. It's, it's too, too perky. <laughs> dun, dun, pa, dun, pa. Yes. Okay, so <laughs> perky. 49. 49. And... Why do we need to play a Brahms symphony in concert again if we have recordings? The answer actually is quite simple. Because these pieces are never the same twice. These pieces develop just like we develop, like the society, like humans develop. A person who has literally just come out of the bunker after bombings in 1943, hears all of this music very differently than somebody who lives in the world where, where um, we are seeing the breakup of Europe. Johannes Brahms was born in 1833 to a family of musicians. As a boy, he learned to play the piano and the cello, and he began composing when he was still young. As a human being, Brahms remains a puzzle. As a composer, he enjoyed success and was able to live comfortably from his music. Orchestra and conductor are setting out to thrill their audience in Paris. They'll play the Brahms symphonies at the Théâtre des Champs-Élysées. Four symphonies, two concerts, and one musical mission. It's a very special place in Paris, the Théâtre Champs-Élysées. Of course, it's quite close to the Champs-Élysées, although it's nearer to the River Seine. I studied in Paris, I, I learned how to play so much Brahms in Paris. To me, it seems like a natural thing to do. Wahnsinn, in dieser Stadt einen ganzen Zyklus spielen zu können, zwei Konzerte hintereinander, nur mit unseren Symphonien, kein Solist, der ja oft dazu beiträgt, dass der Saal voll wird, sondern wir mit unserem Brahms im Mittelpunkt, das ist natürlich eine Sensation. The first performance of the Third Symphony was given by the Vienna Philharmonic. It was a triumph for Brahms. But there were also critical voices. The journal Signale für die Musikalische Welt wrote, 
Fortunately, this symphony is not long, but it does contain a lot of brass noise, and despite being relatively short, it creates an effect of tedium. Brahms' third symphony is a kind of an enigmatic work because on one hand, a lot of people consider it his best symphony, and oddly, it is least performed of his symphonies. It's a very difficult symphony, it is quite uh, tricky and complicated to put together, but for most music lovers, this is the favorite symphony, the, 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 the little underplayed favorite. Second horn. And the same tempo almost. Pavo Yavi was born in 1962 in Estonia, then still part of the Soviet Union. It was a musical family. His father, Nirma Yavi, was a conductor, as well as his uncle, Valo Yavi. And his younger brother, Christian, also took up the baton. In Tallinn, Pavo Yevi studied percussion and conducting. In 1980, the family emigrated to the United States. Pavo Yevi continued his studies in Philadelphia and Los Angeles. Among his teachers was Leonard Bernstein. about the second movement of this wonderful symphony. You start off playing very much a chorale, um, a tune with the other clarinetist and the two bassoonists. And the tune continues on. Uh, I love playing this tune because this is music that really has to speak. You have to really find, it's not a simple melody, you, uh, you have to really find how this phrase works. You have to work out which voice is speaking, um, what they're saying, is this an answer, is this a reply, is this a comment on what's being said. And strings are interesting. This little answer is where the tempo actually comes from. The, the timbre is very beautiful, but could we imagine, you know, Brahms did all these Rinaldos and all these this, this choral things for a male chorus. You know, if you, have, if you heard the male chorus singing with humming, mm -hmm. do, 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 you, do you know that, hear that sound? This is, this, I hear this in D, like for example, celli, uh, bass, can I take one before D? Just this, and one. Yes, this is, I, I, I can hear the men singing this. It's, it's, it's a male chorus timbre. And also in the very beginning, it's, they're singing. And they're repeating, yeah?
dritte Sinfonie im zweiten Satz. Es gibt eine ganz, ganz nackte Stelle zwischen Fagott und Klarinette. Davor ist eine Pause und dann steigt die erste Klarinette und das erste Fagott beide zusammen ein, in die Stille rein sozusagen. Yes, so that these changes need to have a little bit more length, so that the harmonic, harmonic. You want to play it, I know. It's, let, let's do it, you want, you want to do it? Let's do it, let's and do it. Also, we could, we could try and not stop. In der Pause. Ma exactly, I agree. Bleiben. Yeah, so that there is not, the pauses should not be too taken too literally. They're just breaths, yeah. Da möchte Pavo ein bisschen mehr Fluss haben, dass das nicht so sehr stehen bleibt. Aber eigentlich finde ich eben deswegen so schön, dass man eben ein bisschen mal stehen bleibt, weil davor immer schön fließt. Und dann habe ich so gespielt, wie es mir gefällt und er hat eigentlich gar nichts mehr darüber gesagt. Und er hat uns in Ruhe gelassen und nur die Streiche Einsätze gegeben und sich zur total zurückgehalten. No. Also da war ich sehr, tatsächlich sehr nervös in der Probe, weil ich nicht wusste, wie er reagieren würde. Long. C'est un passage qui est particulier pour nous puisqu'on on entame le, ce fameux mouvement de la troisième symphonie. Je pense qu'il fait un petit peu la magie de ce passage, c'est pas seulement le thème mais aussi l'accompagnement autour. Je pense que c'est ça au fait, qui fait aussi que le, ce passage et un peu hypnotique, on va dire. This is not anymore from this world. It's something that he remembers. He remembers the times when things were beautiful, warm, close. But of course, they are long gone. A little bit like an old person would say, I remember when I was in love once. You know, they're all dead now, but... F, uh, only thing is, and I know you, you choose the length, but if it's the longer, the better. Is it time for a coffee? Yeah, there are, um, yeah, but so, so, so it is, it's good if there is a little bit of, of what's happening. What's up, exactly, yeah. So what's shall we go two bars before F? Let's, let's, let's take two bars before F, exactly. And one. <laughs> you, at the end of the day, you, we will go all with you. You, you know what, what the right thing is, but, but longer. Darüber haben wir immer mit Pavo so ein paar Diskussionen. Er möchte die Pause sehr lang haben. Und je langer, länger ich Pause mache, desto 
Schwieriger ist es auch eigentlich weiterzuspielen. Und da muss man eine gute Mischung finden, innezuhalten, aber doch im Fluss zu bleiben, um dann in dieser Stimmung weiterzumachen. wird vom Erstverkopf übernommen, sozusagen, auf derselben Tonhöhe. Das ist der Verrat, Verrat. Sie endet mit dem G. Und dann wird, überlappt sich der Ton. Ab, ab da bis zum Schluss ist ein Marathon für uns. Keine Sekunde Zeit zu entspannen. Wenn man natürlich weniger Luft bekommt, arbeitet das Gehirn auch nicht mehr so richtig. Und da kann man einiges nicht mehr kontrollieren. Das ist unglaublich. Es passieren einfach Sachen, die man gar nicht erwartet, weil der Zustand im Gehirn einfach nicht normal ist zu wenig Sauerstoff. Aber das muss man auch ein bisschen voraus planen. Music that certainly is very visual. Your imagination starts immediately working. You see certain scenario in your head, but it is good that there are no words because everybody can make up their own story. Everybody can relate to their own experiences. The slow moment, the third moment, ends in a kind of resigned, beautiful way. And there is a silence, and you don't want the silence to end. And then orchestra starts playing, almost whispering. They almost, they almost start. And as if you are kind of woken up from this dreamlike state that the movement before put you in. And this whispering type of slightly uneasy movement erupts into this almost almost rage. Yam pa pam. As if you have a kind of a schizophrenic or manic Episode. And then it goes back again, and you and and you realize, okay, there is some some somehow. Everything that happened before was a dream. Now we come back to reality and we see how he really feels about all of this, you know? And you have this, 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 this sense of struggle, but also a sense of, of frustration.
isn't is that it's not reachable to me? Why is it that I can't? Everybody else seems to, but it's not for me. And could we once just uh, it's do the viola, that beautiful viola solo? What do you don't like? I like everything. I just wanna, I wanna, I wanna hear it everything because I like it so much. Um, <clears throat> but it's you know, brace, brace, you know. So can we take, can we take once? Um, N is good. N is good. N, we can get into it. N, yeah. One, N. wird sich sozusagen das ganze Stück atomisieren, es löst sich auf. Und die Bratsche ist sozusagen diejenige, die einfach wie eben der Meister des Unterbewussten einfach diese Ruhe einleitet und diesen Zersetzungsprozess. Der Spielraum wird in den Proben vorbereitet und die Konzerte laufen dann wirklich einfach offen ab. Es ist ein offener Prozess, man weiß nicht, wohin es geht. Und äh, das ist das, wirklich das Schöne mit Pavo. Er nimmt einfach diesen Raum und äh, macht, dass es zu einem wirklichen Abenteuer wird. Gerade bei den äh, Konzerten in Paris, wo die Sinfonien als Zyklus gelaufen sind, durfte man den Pavo den ganzen Abend nicht aus den Augen lassen. Er ist spontan, er macht auch im Konzert noch Lautstärkeangaben, gerade Richtung Posaune. Dann macht es mal so, dann heißt es, okay Jungs, jetzt. Er guckt einen an und, und spielt mit einem und das ist natürlich ganz was Besonderes. Also, und eben was vor allen Dingen dieses, dieses Kreative, dieses Momentane, dieses Spontane. Das, da macht eben auch, wenn man auf einer Tour Tournee zehnmal äh, eine Symphonie spielt, ist sie jedes Mal neu. Jedes Mal entsteht sie wirklich in dem Moment und das ist toll. My first contact with Brahms came through my father. When I was a small boy, my father, of course, not only conducted them, but listened to all the recordings. So a lot of what I know and what I intuitively feel now has to do with what he was pointing out. And we all know that the first introduction to anything is the most powerful and long-lasting one. From Bernstein, I remember the Fourth Symphony, which he was teaching in the Summer Institute. That was kind of a life-changing experience. Everything that he did with the Fourth Symphony is very vividly still in my mind. That something that actually made me realize or love the spontaneous side of Brahms, something that we never thought existed before that. I got a lot from both men, and it's still helpful, and it's still there.
Brahms conducted the first performance of his last symphony in the city of Meiningen. The concert with the Meiningen Court Orchestra was a great success. The violinist, Josef Joachim, wrote to the composer, it has bored ever deeper into my soul, mine and the orchestra's. I have really fallen for the thrilling way it develops, the density of invention, and the wonderfully entwined burgeoning of the themes, not to mention the richness and beauty of individual passages. like this, uh, when I was studying with Bernstein in Los Angeles. Uh, it was a fourth symphony. I never forget when he was teaching this symphony to young conductors in the, with a youth orchestra. And Celli started playing and everybody's making a beautiful sound. And he was just saying this, said, yes, but you know, what makes it really interesting is that mad German tango. And from that point, I have never been able to get it out of my head. This is what Bernstein called this, the, the mad German tango. Dun, 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 dun. Right now, at the end, it gets a little bit weak in character. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, and also a bit fast. Of course, it's not really a tango, but that story is good enough for you to understand the, the, the character he was looking for in order to make this lugubrious melody even more um, interesting and have a structure. Somehow the timing of the last bar maybe could be a little bit more marcato, a bit more um, just just together, precise. Let's take one more time, M, please. Could could we just try playing a little bit longer on the accented notes? Right, good idea. One, one. The obvious thing is that it's a symphony that comes from a person with an entirely different state of mind. It's a person who doesn't necessarily hope for anything anymore. It is a person, for me, I don't, where all the illusions are out of the way. There is no more illusions. There is, there is a good, good sense, I always would say, person who knows that there is no God. Das ganze Orchester hört da drauf und setzt sich da auch drauf. Und es steht 3P da, also es ist ganz, ganz, ganz leise. Ich dämpfe da ein bisschen, dass man es noch deutlicher hört, spiele mit relativ harten Schlägen, aber versuche trotzdem wirklich ganz deutlich zu spielen, weil wenn ich jetzt PPP spielen würde und ganz leise, das würde keiner im Orchester hören. Ähm, man muss es immer angleichen. Also wenn ich dann, ich empfinde mich da wirklich auch als wichtiger und, und trotzdem muss man das relativ sehen und das muss man dann einfach wissen, was die Aufgabe ist. So. Bye. 
Das ist der äh, dritte Satz aus der vierten Sinfonie und ähm, die Überschrift äh, heißt Allegro Giocoso, was so viel heißt wie äh, fröhlich, lustig, mit Energie. Can, 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 can we actually just This uh, jocoso thing needs to be a bit more jocoso. In other words, it needs to be more fun. We, we, it seems a little bit like it's very serious business. A little bit more joy and, and it's only for this one. Yeah? It is, it, there is virility in this music. There is a sense of strength, there is muscle. There is something almost unexpectedly positive. Like something that you insert in order to have a fresh beginning and sure enough the fresh beginning is the finale the finale needs an entirely new blank page you should not be remembering anything that happened before Fourth Finale is one of the most interesting movements of, of any Brahms piece ever, certainly it's the symphonies. It's based on a Bach cantata, and it is a passacaglia, basically is a repeating pattern on which you then build variations. It's a little bit like blues, you know? You listen to a blues chords, and, the, and then he will tell you a story in many different ways, but the chords remain the same. Das sind die acht Takte, die Brahms dem letzten Satz zugrunde gelegt hat und die immer wieder vorkommen, ihre Gestalt zwar ändern, aber immer zu hören sind. Also wenn man sich die einprägt, kann man die eigentlich den ganzen Satz überfinden. Ganze Bläser Holz und Blechbläser spielen diese acht Takte, aus denen sich dann das Stück zusammensetzt. In der Variation vor der Flötenvariation beruhigt sich das Ganze schon, fängt an, sich aufzulösen, wird porös, brüchig und dann in den letzten Takten vor dem Einstieg des Flötensolos sinken Flöte, Klarinetten runter, bis dann nur noch die einsame Flöte übrig bleibt. Es ist eine der wenigen Stellen der gesamten Orchesterliteratur, wo die Flöte mal keine heiteren Empfindungen ausdrücken darf. Mit diesen Vorherhalten, Seufzermotiven, sich nach oben schaukelt, als Höhepunkt im Takt 5 ein, ein Schrei fast, ein Verzweiflungsschrei, um dann wieder resigniert nach unten zu fallen. Also es ist wirklich ein Moment, der der Auflösung, der Trauer, der Verzweiflung, der Einsamkeit. Und dass Brahms eben, dass der Flöte 
zugetraut hat, das auszudrücken, ist natürlich sensationell. Certain sense of desperation and some kind of a feeling of of reaching for something and and looking for something but not quite obtaining it and and as if you are looking for salvation, you're looking for for acceptance, as if you are going to a confession. <laughs> End or death? I don't think so, because it's it sounds too too alive and angry for it to be that close to death. It's a very it's a kind of a strange ending, and it always feels like we we need more, few more bars. So how about? To, but um, I think that we are out of luck. We are not going to get any more bars. So my suggestion is ya dera dara dara dera dera dara da lam pam pa tam. It's the last last bar. Perhaps not yeah as as in tempo but as long as possible. Yam yam tam. Yeah, so that there is a really the end of the symphony. Uh, uh, it often we hear it from the applause sometimes. Tam and it's like that's it. So that's finished. We need at least five or six chords. Beethoven would write uh, 16 but, chords. Uh, do you want a, a, a hit at the end? Ba, wa, I, th ba, I think um, maybe not too, not, uh, ah, not, maybe not like this. Be, like, yeah, okay. But somehow there needs to, it can yeah. be a little swing at yeah. Yeah, but But not, not, uh, not too concrete. Yeah? Okay. It feels as if everything just crashes and, and, and stops. When you're young, pam, 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 ta 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 tam ta 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 tam ta ya ta ti ta 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 Enough. Door is closed. No more symphonies. To this day, sometimes, I don't think of Brahms as a man who used to walk down the street in Bremen or Wiesbaden and sit at a pub and drink wine or whatever. For me, it is a kind of a godlike figure. What he left behind and the impact that he has had on our culture is so enormous. He has kind of done something that very few people have managed to do and truly become immortal through his work. Mm -hmm.